Hey everybody, welcome to episode 10 of the Bell Fall Search Focus on Talent video series. This is the Digital Marketing Edition. I was introduced uh, to today's guest in 2020 during a uh, CMO search I was working on. Uh, she has, uh, she's become a very good friend of mine and, and more importantly, a, a strong advisor, a dependable advisor uh, to me along the way. She has extensive product marketing experience, uh, previously in, in consumer products with American Greetings. She also has uh, several years of experience in financial services, where she drove brand marketing and company growth at one of the most successful exits in Cleveland history, Cardinal Commerce, which is now part of Visa. Although she's very strong in digital marketing, her expertise is in building brands and taking them to market. She is a true marketing executive. I am honored to welcome Tara Lavelle, current head of marketing for a set of private private equity backed companies in Cleveland, Ohio. Tara, welcome and thanks for being here. Oh, Ron, thanks for having me. I uh, uh, appreciate you being here. You know, that was a, a really brief introduction in, 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 in my view of you, but can you um, probably improve on that and talk about, you know, most importantly, your career progression over time? How did you get started? How have you, you know, moved from role to role and, and, um, and uh, how have you developed your marketing expertise over the years? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I find that I just do what I love to do. I, you know, I didn't know that I wanted to be in marketing. I just know that I love like <clears throat> insights on human behavior, consumer behavior, how we buy things, what we do, what we think about. And, you know, I won't just, I've never felt like I've ever had a job. Like I've always felt like I pick something to do because I want to do it. And I know that sounds super ethereal and probably not um, typical of most people, but I just always find like, I find things that I love and then I just explode and grow with them. I mean, one of the things that cracks me up is um, like we were selling, I was selling digital subscriptions online before when Amazon was just selling books. <laughs> yep. And my kids are like books, Amazon sold books. So I like to be on things that are new or maybe like things that aren't, um, I take a lot of risks um, and they've paid out, like paid well out for me. Um, <clears throat> and it's because I love what I'm doing. So I pick things to do um, that are really interesting to me. All my whole career has been in marketing. I work, um, I have a marketing undergrad and I have an MBA. Um, but everything I've done has been, there's marketing is a wide field. There's so many pieces, parts to it, but truly it's like finding out who you want to talk to and what, and how you get them to buy. So, you know, I've done B2B, I've done B2C, I've worked um, in research, I've worked in online subscriptions, I've built websites, I've done um, you know, product marketing, I've done brand marketing, and I think it all just comes down to the basic of how you want to communicate. And, you know, I would just say, like, I've always, I've, I have, a, like, in my career history, it's funny, I've had these seven-year chunks. I'm like, I don't know if I get a seven-year itch or what happens, but I set very specific things that I want to accomplish, and then once I accomplish them, I move on to do something else to find another love. Um, and that's how I re really how my career has progressed. Um, I've gone into things where I don't know how to do them and I figure them out. Um, and I think a lot of that came from an early mentor that I had in college. And you know, she just encouraged me to do things that I didn't know how to do. Um, and I talked to people that I didn't know. And you can learn a lot from really just asking a lot of questions and being curious. You know, your when I talked a little bit about the transition from consumer products to financial services, you, can, can you talk about that a little bit? And and um, I'm really curious, you know, because I represent lots of candidates and I work with lots of companies that, you know, are very often kind of have tunnel vision and say, well, no, they've only been in consumer products; they can't possibly be in financial services or vice versa. So, how did you get that opportunity, and what was that transition like for you? Yeah. So all the opportunities that I've had in my entire career have been from former people that I've worked with, mm -hmm. either customers or vendors or um, actual colleagues. And so I think that has to do with, you know, you do a great job of wherever you are and people remember you. Um, that particular, I um, <clears throat> was introduced to one of the co-founders at Cardinal from a former colleague who I worked with eight years earlier. Um, and she happened to be the neighbor of this co-founder. 
And truly, like I, I met him and I was like, I got to work there. <laughs> so, um, I had worked direct to consumer. I worked, you know, B2B to C, uh, but I had never worked in that, like just down B2B. Um, but I really understood the internet really well. And we're selling to merchants. Um, in fact, uh, a job that I had earlier in my career, we had used the software that they um, had used and I didn't like it. And I made them take it off my site as a merchant. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well now I got to make this better. Um, but when I met them, I knew they had a very specific mission and I wanted to be a part of it. So I have very specific criteria that I look for when I look for opportunities that I've mm -hmm. created. Um, I guess I'll call them like my brand pillars. So I look for opportunities that can meet those things with me. Um, and one of those is that like, I have to believe in the product and what it's doing. And I love helping merchants. So that was a great like step, even if it was in financial services, it's just helping merchants do things better. Um, and then the second criteria is that I have to be building skills. Like I always want to be learning things. I don't um, want to do stuff I've always done. And that's why I take a lot of risks. And sometimes those, you know, don't work out, sometimes you fail, right? <laughs> um, and even um, one of the things I really liked about the three co-founders at Cardinal is they talked about, like, we take all kinds of risks and that's okay yep. because some things will fail. Fail fast and move on to the next thing and don't, like, worry about taking the next risk because the next risk might get you that big account that you didn't think you were going to get. Yep. Um, and then I look for, like, places where I can have an impact um, if I feel like you're too small and you're not going to be able to make the impact, I don't want to waste time there. Um, and lastly, I look for fun. Like I met the co-founders and every, I, I had, I think it was a crazy number, maybe eight rounds of interviews at Cardinal, wow. but all, all of them ended at the bar. Every single one. <laughs> <are fun>. yep. <laughs> I understand. Good. And now where I work, we have a bar in our building. <laughs> Groups of beer, so we have an on-site tiki bar. <laughs> so, can we transition to case studies, uh, yeah. if you don't mind? Um, I know you had a couple lined up that that you wanted to talk about, so you know, I'll turn the floor over to you if you don't mind. Yeah, not at all. So I thought one case study that might be interesting is a current one. So where I'm currently at, I work for a portfolio business um, where we support different brands and. During COVID, it's been very interesting because um, a lot of the businesses in my portfolio did a lot of event and relationship marketing, which in B2B has been the age old um, standby and definitely has grown businesses based on reputation and all those great things. Um, but during COVID, we kind of had to do some things differently because we couldn't have those in-person events or in-person things. Sure. Um, and it was funny. I was like, well, everything old is new again. Let's try some old tricks. So we did, um, we did a list rental and I haven't done a list rental in years. Um, and it performed really, really well. And I thought, you know, with email marketing, I didn't really think that it would, you know, on a cold list really wouldn't be able to deliver. Um, and we saw great results, um, and still seeing results. Like it's still producing results for us. So it's got a long tail. Um, and so I think my advice on like kind of a case study is, you know, just because something is old doesn't mean it can't, you can't try it. You know, I mean, I know there's a lot of things going on too with direct marketing and direct mailers kind of making a little resurgence. So, you know, just be creative and you just be different in your marketing and know the audience that you're talking to. Um, we bought a very, we have a niche business. And so we bought a very specific niche list and it just, we talk to them because we know what they want to, you know, we know their persona and what they want to hear and talk about. And we got a great response rate. I think you can't be everything to everybody. Um, and so I just, my advice would be, you know, just try things because you never know what's going to actually work. Yep. Um, the second thing I thought I would talk about is a cardinal example. And so, um, you know, we were an industry leader. Um, we had a, um, a, a negative connotation to the software, like the, our software was an industry that had a lot of negative connotations to it, that um, a lot of our like co-opetition competition would talk about, like they would continue the negative rhetoric. So we said, well, instead of 
calling ourselves that? Why don't we change the narrative and what we call it? And so we did like a whole um, very detailed, the whole leadership team, we said, well, now what this would take and we have to really get to change the way people think about it and change what we want to call it. We had to approach it, I would call it from a 360 point of view. So we went to like our business partners like MasterCard and Visa and Amex and said, this is what, how we want to talk about it in the marketplace. We went to our customer base who are merchants and banks and how we got them to start talking about it. And when you get a lot of really big, you know, blue, blue chip merchants to start talking how you're talking, um, people start, like you can start moving it. But I think part of it was we had, um, you know, we were, we had the market leadership so we already owned the market space, so we could control some of that a little better, but we didn't want to take for granted that everybody would just follow us. So we made sure to work all those different angles and audiences and talk to those audiences the way they wanted to hear. And truly, that is like the ultimate marketing, right? So to get people to change their perception about what happened, and really our business exploded after that. Um, and it, it took a long time, even internally for people, whatever you call things internally, you call them externally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you use weird acronyms internally, you're going to say it, your sales reps are going to say it. So it took a long time to change that, but I feel like it took us a good 18 months, but that was sort of our plan. And we were able to change what people called um, our product and our industry. So it was oh, really cool. fun. It was really fun. Well, it sounded pretty substantial too. I mean, that might that might require a, a whole separate uh, uh, video or blog post around the process you went through uh, in a, in a non proprietary way to uh, to change that perception. I mean, that had to be a pretty rigorous and thoughtful and intense eighteen months. Yeah, and commitment, right? And so commitment. the whole leadership team was like jumping in the deep end together. Like yeah. I. I loved working with that team. We were, you know, not that we didn't have our differences, but, you know, when we agreed to do something, we were all in. Like, everybody, let's just go do this. Um, and you can't make those kind of changes if you don't have all, like, everybody in. Yep. Well, that's, I'm going to take the, the team comments as a transition to talk about talent a little bit. And I know you and I have had this conversation, especially about Cardinal around the effectiveness of the team. And, and I know they grew very fast. So you've seen massive cultural shifts, you've seen massive, um, you know, inflow of, of lots of people rapidly. Um, so let's talk about talent, if you're cool with that. Um, yeah. So so first, when it comes to, you know, I guess, entry level talent, talent, you know, college graduates, um, a couple things, you know, what are you seeing in, in the marketing field in general that, that you would love to share with people, you know, kind of in that position from an advice perspective on where to focus their time and energy and how to, how to take their first steps, you know, out of college and into, uh, into a field of marketing. Yeah. So, you know, two, I think very important things is one is like, I, I'm a learner. I always want to learn things. I always want to be building skills. There's so many resources available online that you can be building skills for, you know, any of the software platforms have certifications or like, HubSpot or Bright Edge or, you know, SEM Rush, you can go learn about any of the software tools so that you can put those on your resume. Like I have Hootsuite experience or I have HubSpot experience, whatever that is. Because a lot of times it's hard to get that first job, right? Or that first experience. So how do you get those first experiences? Um, and one way to differentiate yourself is to go and, you know, like you show you're definitely in, like you're invested in your career and in your investing in your skills and that you're using resources. And it takes a little time to do those things. I'm, I've done some of those certifications and they can take, you know, man hours. You're talking about like 40, 60 man hours to complete some of the certifications. So, you know, if you're trying to stand out and get that first opportunity or get someone to notice you or talk to you, I do know that on LinkedIn, you know, people are looking for certain things like, oh, we have these tools in our toolkit. Who's got these skills that we can go mine and find them? Um, I know Salesforce is one in particular that like you can't find Salesforce admins. They like they're just crazy to find. And so yep. people go and mine and find, look for people who aren't looking for jobs. Right. Yep. So I think that's a way that you can. Um, in a sense, make an investment in yourself that doesn't really cost 
costs you money, but costs you just the investment and the time. The second thing I would do um, for those recent, like those colleges is really, it sounds really strange, but network. Like I realized that or early on in my career that people will talk to you, like get in a warm introduction to somebody and set up a call or coffee, or, you know, now the Zoom, the Zoom, I feel like this last year I've had so many Zoom calls with people. Um, but, you know, I think that like it's invaluable because I don't know, like I don't connect with anybody on LinkedIn that I don't know. It's just a personal um, choice that I have mm -hmm. made. Mm -hmm. um, so I've at least talked to every single person that I'm connected to on LinkedIn. So I know that I, I know some obviously better than others. But <clears throat> knowing people and getting connected to meet somebody else, you're, you can meet lots of people through your network. And it's just getting started. It just takes, you know, the, again, like taking the time to go look and find out like, who knows? Like, I want to meet this person who knows them. Yep. And yep. how can I get introduced? Yeah. No, I couldn't agree more. You know, even when I started my own business, I was blown away by the number of people who want to help literally just want to help and are happy to help and happy to have a conversation and steer you in the right direction. Right. So, um, so don't be afraid of that. So I love that advice. Yeah. Um, how about when it comes to experienced talent, you know, I'm sure you've, you've interviewed um, a lot of people over the years and, and have hired lots of people over the years or not hired lots of people over the years. Um, <laughs> Can you talk about, you know, any advice you would give people as far as differentiating themselves, you know, from others, whether it's, you know, with a resume in the interviewing process, um, during the interviewing process, et cetera, that you know, maybe, maybe examples you've seen that stand out or again, just pure suggestions you, you would tell people to help themselves. Yeah. Well, like in the marketing field, I would just start with you're a marketer, go market yourself. Right. So like, how do you think about like, who, who are you, who are your targets? So don't send something to like 5,000 people, pick five, right? Five places that you would love to be a part of or an organization that you want to be a part of and then figure out everything you can learn about that. Just like you're building a persona, right? Like marketers know all these things of how to build that foundational work and how to connect and how to do that. I, <clears throat> um, and then I think the second thing is I mostly find people or have hired people from someone I know who introduced me. So I immediately reach out to my network. Hey, I'm looking for this. And you immediately come back with people you don't, again, know. And so like I'll do dinner, coffee, whatever, meet a couple of people. Then when I have an opening, I'm like, I know who I'm going to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so most of the time when I've had to hire, key, like at, at Cardinal specifically, when I had to hire key roles, I already had people lined up that I had been networking and like dinner and coffee with for several months before I knew I was going to have the opening because I knew we were growing. I mean, when you're growing double digits, you just can't keep up with everything and you know you're going to be bringing people on. But even if you're not, I always kind of keep that open of, you know, you get recommendations from other people that you know. Um, when I was at Cardinal, we were a part of, like Primus was our private equity. So there was a, you know, I got to play with some of the other Primus um, people in their portfolio and I used them as well, like, who do you know in this space? And they could just help you find and meet people. So, you know, I would say like those kind of conversations are great. Like one person I talked to and two years later, I contacted them like, hey, I'm looking for somebody now that I think you would be perfect for. Um, so, so I think the answer is for anyone listening, go connect with Tara Lavelle, see if she'll have coffee with you, and then someday she'll hire you because, <laughs> because she's gotten to know you. Um, um, but can I flip the tables on that real quick? Because I know, um, you know, we know together that you um, went out squarely at the beginning slash middle of COVID and, and were looking for an executive marketing role, and you found it, yep. uh, and you found it close to home. Uh, yep. So I'm guessing that you employed a lot of those same, you know, kind of tactics and strategies that you just mentioned, but yep. can you walk through that a little bit, at least at a high level, kind of what, what did you do to be so successful during COVID to go find the role you did? Yeah. So like, it was funny. I literally wrote a, a brand plan for myself. I was like, I just do a brand plan at Cardinal. I know how to do all this stuff. And I decided, okay, I'm going to go 
and just like really decide what I want and who I am at my core and what I want to look for. And then once I did that, then I just really set up some target companies that would fit with the things I needed and the skills I wanted to build. And then reached out to people to meet people who know people at those companies. Um, so it was very targeted. Um, and I had conversations and some of the conversations I had like didn't go anywhere. And some of the conversations um, went obviously further or faster than others. But I mostly counted on that network of former colleagues that really like people I had worked with before and like, who do you, like, what do you know that's going on? This is the kind of thing I'm looking for. But I realized you have to tell people specifically what you want, especially if you have experience, like if you're out of, out of you know, you have a little bit of career experience, you don't want to, um, you just don't, it's, again, I wasn't looking for a job. And fortunately, I was in a situation where I didn't have to find a job. So, it, you know, I, I think that puts it in a very different perspective. And that also, again, sounds super ethereal and sounds fake, but it's not. In my case, like, I um, have always lived very financially conservatively. And so I was able to take the time to find the right place, um, you know, and then got very lucky with, um, you know, meeting the Kennedys and, being able to work in the portfolio business that they have. Yep. Yeah. I love the brand plan concept um, because I, I have a mentor that that used to ask one of the best questions I've ever heard. And it was, he would ask people, no matter what they're, no matter if they were marketing or technology or business consultants, what is your brand? And it would always set people back on their heels and it would, it would set them back and they'd be like, I have to think about that. And I... Yeah. I advise that to lots of people I talk to because I think if you can describe what your brand is, not only can you tell people kind of what your capabilities are and how you can line up against what they're looking for, but I think you also have a lot of confidence in, to your point, what you want to do, you know, mm -hmm. and, and what your, you know, where your strengths really are. So, um, yeah, I, I've, we could I've write a book it. together on the on the brain plan concept or something. <laughs> yeah, like I love it. I uh, I've never heard anyone ask that question, but I love it. I might steal it. <laughs> Please borrow, go for it. Go for borrow, it. Borrow, borrow it. <laughs> rent it. You can rent it. Uh, like the list. Um, well, Tara, this has been extremely helpful. I really appreciate your time and uh, and uh, been like I said, looking forward to this to a long for a long time. So, thank you very much and. Um, I will, as always, I'll include your your link in the in the notes, and um, hopefully you'll get some new uh, new connection requests and um, and uh, new jobs for people. So appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, no problem. I love connecting. So and it was good to, to catch up today, Ron. Appreciate it. Thanks, Tara. Take care. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.